19. Sorry for the delay. There's always something. Hope you're doing well today. Um, I'm just gonna make sure this video is coming up and we got audio and things are looking good. Of course, it doesn't show up in the regular YouTube. YouTube management, but today um, we'll be talking about uh, USB detecting whether or not USB is plugged in, but more in general just USB events, and then uh, we'll also be talking about device tree relationships, and are they important? Um, let me see. No, it's not, what, it's not what I wanted. Go away. Make sure the video is up and running. There we go. But more in general, just USB events. Nice. And okay. We're good. We're good. We're good. All right. Let's let's get the show on the road. I know your time is valuable here, so sorry for the delay and sorry for uh, starting a little bit late. So let's let's jump into it. Um, if you haven't already subscribed, feel free to subscribe. Leave a message below. And any you know the suggestions that you guys make are the things that I talk about. So especially this week. This week is a another kind of. Uh, community focused and inspired video so if you have uh, things you'd want to for me to go over feel free to let me know in the comments below really helpful um, so the first question is from Joseph how do you get the you know, how do you detect if USB is inserted using the, the USB API and um, we will do that so the cool thing is that the USB API uh, does allow you to kind of detect changes uh, basically, anything that causes a status change, there are multiple different statuses. I'll show you that in a hot second. Uh, but you know, this can be useful for switching power states. So, for instance, if you were hooked up to USB, maybe you're going to turn off the power supply when you're hooked up to USB, vice versa. And then also, um, you know, maybe you want something to happen when USB is inserted. Maybe you want something to happen when a USB error occurs. All that is super handy, and um, we'll, we'll we'll jump into that. Um, this this sample to preface this this sample is um, so the USB interface changed a little bit on Zephyr 3.0. I'm using Zephyr or um, NCS 1.9.1, which is an older version of Zephyr. I think 2.7 ish, 2.6 in between 2.6 2.7. So some of these APIs are a little bit older. But you get the general idea of, yes, Zephyr has the ability to do this. Um, this is an exact example for, and something I've tested here for NCS 1.9, but obviously um, it's a little bit different in NCS, or, uh, Zephyr 3.0, but it'll, it should work about the same. Um, first thing is setting that configuration. The important part is just turning on USB, making sure that's on. One thing you wanna make sure also is that um, I set that USB UART console to no. That'll override the default console. So while it's handy uh, for certain situations, you actually pipe your console output, your log output to the um, USB device. Cool, uh, but in this case, I actually want to see the logs when I'm on plugging and unplugging the USB device. So uh, by default, I'm using the UART zero interface, which is going to the pins on here. I don't know if I can show you guys, it's still hooked up. Uh, see, so this guy, this guy is plugged into the, um, the transmit pin of this Xenon here, just so I can kind of look at it and see what happens as I, I uh, plug and unplug from it. But you get the idea. Uh, make sure I got that, yep. So the, this is the configuration uh, inside the um, main file. My main file is very simple. Make sure that I'm importing the many of the USB call uh, the USB dependencies, and then um, I'm just covering the two events that I'm most interested, which is connected and disconnected, and just printing a log output when that happens. Um, obviously, there are a lot more uh, status codes, and you can see this is just from the t I just copied and pasted just from the beginning. But you got error, reset, connected, configured, blah 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 blah. So all of those are super handy 
for the different use cases. I mean, if there's a thing that you want to track with USB, you most likely can get the event for it. So, uh, and then in the main, literally just to, you know sending out a boot message and then configuring USB. In this case, USB, you're setting a callback with that USB underscore enable. I think that might be different in uh, Zephyr 3.0. There's also a separate function for setting that callback as well, I think, it as the, the latest and greatest. But here, uh, and as it was for a long time, you can just set that callback uh, within the USB enable function, which is very handy. And, and then here is the output. So I literally booted it up. I, I had it booted without it being connected, and then I plugged it in. And then sh you know, within five minutes later, as I was testing this thing and playing with it, uh, you can see I just pulled it out and it disconnected. It showed that it disconnected. Very simple, straightforward. Uh, nothing too crazy here, but uh, you can see that you can take advantage of the ability to kind of sense what's going on with the USB port and do things and change things in your application as you need to. So, but the, in summary, yeah, the USB events can be handy, of course, like I mentioned. You can watch watch out for, as I mentioned, the APIs are a little bit different um, in the newer versions of Zephyr, so just watch that, but you know that the same functionality is there. Uh, they wouldn't remove it, of course. And uh, of course, and then it works on the NCS flavor of, of Zephyr. So uh, either one, if, you, if you're using a Nordic specific device, you can always use NCS. Or you can, if it's supported in vanilla Zephyr, like the NR52840, you can use it there as, as well. It should work either one, so. Next question, what is the purpose of child-parent node relationships in Zephyr? And um, basically what Muhammad was going, coming, his, his question was a little bit longer, but he was like, why, why do these even exist? Why can't I just reference this device directly? Do, do I need to put a certain device under a specific I2C or UART or whatever? And... Um, Hopefully I'll clarify that and make it a little bit more apparent why that's important. So, yes. So I'll say again, they're very important. This, these relationships are uh, critical for your applications to work properly. Uh, they allow you to associate the devices and peripherals, and we'll get into those details uh, shortly, but without any of that, uh, your Zephyr applications would most likely not work, especially if you're using these peripherals. You'll probably get, and you won't even get to a runtime problem, you will get to a, an issue with compilation. So you, when you're referencing these devices or whatever, you're gonna get most likely a device tree error. So something to think about. But this is what I'm talking about. Uh, you were looking at the relationships in the device tree. So you have a kind of a parent and then you have a child device and it lives underneath that parent device. Uh, I'm using the LIS 2 dh because it's just a great example. Um, it's one I've used in the past in other videos. So, but you get the idea here. We have I2C1, that has its own configuration information. Typically that is uh, part of the device tree or the uh, the board you're using, that board has that device or that peripheral, I should say, defined, you know, what pins it's using, what speed and things like that. This is actually from an overlay. So I'm adding on the LAS2DH to that, that interface. So I'm adding more of the, the pertinent information about the, the accelerometer itself. And uh, you can see I'm setting you know, our QGPOs and blah, 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 all this, all the specifics around that device. So any, any, any center driver, any driver in general that relies on um, any type of peripheral, you are expert C, USB, blah, blah, blah. I don't like saying blah, blah, blah today, but um, you get the idea, etc. cetera. Uh, it's very important because you're, you need to know you have a device, say an accelerometer, say a temperature sensor, you need to know what, what peripheral it's associated with. Otherwise, you're kind of, you don't have any way that, to associate the two together. And these relationships, essentially, when you put them together, you used to initialize the underlying peripheral interface. 
A lot of this is actually abstracted away from the end user. You don't even know this stuff is happening. So it's like, from someone coming in, it's like, why do I even have to do this? Um, so you can see like in an application, you're gonna pull the, you're gonna pull this device. We're actually getting the, the what this, uh, what these macros do is we're getting the first instance, the first, uh, you know, first time this shows up in a device tree, we're just getting the first one. In most cases, you're only gonna have one device on connected to your, uh, to your board. Many times um, for more complicated applications, you might have more of the same sensor. Um, so you might have to uh, change that as you go. But um, that zero, it basically says like, you know, which, which index I believe you can get that one at. Um, this is within the actual uh, driver itself for the LAS 2DH. And this is using the sensor API. Sensor API feeds the LAS 2DH device into this initialization function. And that allows you to get any internal data. You can see that first line there, uh, you're getting the device data, which is you know all the information about the device. It's all custom to that driver, specific to that driver. There's also some configuration data that also gets pulled out. But the, uh, and the important part here is, you can see we're getting the, and this might change in the newer versions of Zephyr, because the device get binding uh, function is kind of deprecated, but we're getting that bus. We're getting the Artscript C bus. We're actually pulling it in the driver, and we're also we're also initializing that guy shortly after. Now this driver is a little bit more complicated because you are using it, it has the ability you can use it for spy or Artscript C. So maybe it's not the best example to show a simple driver, but uh, you can see that what we're doing here is we're actually Inside, we're making sure that that I2C bus is initialized before we actually start using it. It's referencing that in there. Uh, more importantly, I'll show you how this um, this as the LAS 2DH device actually gets defined. It gets actually defined as a macro, and I think that is next. So there's two ways of initializing this guy. I kind of mentioned it, uh, I2C and Spy. I'm just gonna show you how they're initializing the, the spy interface, but you can see here, we're getting the bus name and actually using a device tree macro to get the bus label, which is, you know, I have to C1. Um, and we're also getting the address, all the other pertinent information related to the device. The most important part is that bus name because we're actually checking the parent child relationship when we're checking, okay, what is the bus label for this, uh, for this LAS2DH? So you can see how I'm, we're, we're putting the two together. It's actually that device tree macro is pulling the information from the device tree. It's already been kind of compiled and put together. And it's saying, I want the name of the, of the peripheral that this is associated with, I score C1. So, that's the important part about the device and the or the peripheral device relationship or the, the parent and child relationship is that all that stuff is happening probably without you even knowing it, but it's happening inside the drivers at down at a lower level. So that's why it's it's so critical and important that 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 relationship is there because otherwise uh, Zephyr as we know it in the device tree would not work. Uh, <laughs> it wouldn't work at all. So. Um, the other kind of benefits, and um, this is something that Mohammed said in his message, is like, I know, I see the obvious benefit of this, this hierarchy, you know, human readable, like, I can see, yes, this device belongs to I2C1, but what's, like, what's the benefits beyond that? And there you go, is that it wouldn't work without it. So, um, but, you know, importantly, it's, it's associating that device with that peripheral. LAS2DH with i squared C1, and all that magic happens at the driver level. For for end users of Zephyr, um, especially for any entry drivers, you're never going to know unless you look at, look deep into how things work. Uh, that that is how it works. So, but that was a very quick and dirty. How many minutes was that? Very quick. Um, Seventeen minutes. But. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed to my mailing list, feel free to go to my website, jaredwolf.com. 
sign up right there on the homepage and you'll get notified about these, uh, these live sessions and also about anything else that I have going on. There, are, there have been some requests for courses and uh, you know that might happen in the future. So if you want to be up to date on that, make sure that you sign up at jaredwolf.com. It's right on the homepage and we'll um, really, uh, we'll, uh, you'll be in the know. And let me see if there are any comments. Of course, they don't show up on the YouTube app for some reason. Comments, comments, comments. I'll pull it up on my computer. That's, that's one thing I can get there. Yeah. Let's see. My channel. And then uh, I'll let you guys go and enjoy your day. But if you haven't, if you don't want to stick around for questions and comments, you feel free to take off. But I will answer some questions if anybody has any. Let me see if there's any questions. Live chat. Cool. I don't think I see any questions. But if you do have questions after this live stream, you can leave them in the comments below and I'll try to get back to you. Um, try to be as specific as possible about your questions. Um, questions like, I got a lot of errors and I don't know what to do. Um, those, you can actually go to community.jaredwolf.com and you can paste your logs in a message there uh, and someone in the community, maybe even me, will try to help you with your, with your issues. I know some folks in the community had some problems. Um, he said one of the users or the numbers was like, I have, I changed some things in my overlay and now it's just like broken. <laughs> um, and uh, it's really hard to, especially on YouTube, it's, you can't really post code and like go back and forth a lot in YouTube. It's not very, uh, it's not meant for that. So if you'd like to, you can go to community.jaredwolf.com and um, you can post your problems there and we'll try to get a fix for you. But. Um, I, I, get, I did get a question for Adib. Courses, yes, definitely with some real live examples. Yeah, I'd love to get some real live examples. Um, a lot of the stuff that I've already created is like, why don't I just turn this into a course? Like, I know, I know the community is asking for more things like that. So um, I will try to. <laughs> got, a, got a lot of projects, got a lot of balls in the air. So um, I'm definitely down to make some courses and help out. Uh, help folks kind of get navigate Zephyr a little bit more. So definitely, definitely, definitely. All right. Cool. I don't see any other questions, but I really appreciate you being here today. Thank you so much. And um, of course, leave a comment below if you have any questions, because that's what this this uh, this channel is all about. So have a good one, and we'll see you on the next one.